Hi everyone, welcome back to Optimal Anesthesia. Today, we're diving into a fascinating topic that affects every patient undergoing surgery, how different types of anesthesia impact your body's oxygen supply and overall heart function. It might sound technical, but don't worry. We're going to break it down and engagingly. So, stay tuned whether you're a medical professional, a student, or just curious about how anesthesia works. Imagine your heart is like the engine of a car. Under general anesthesia, that engine doesn't run at full speed. In fact, it slows down. But why does this happen? Well, it's because of the drugs we use during anesthesia, like propofol or sevoflurane. These medications affect how your heart works, they make it pump blood less effectively. This effect is called myocardial depression. Here's how it works. Your heart needs calcium to contract and pump blood. Think of calcium as the fuel that powers the engine. When you're under general anesthesia, these drugs lower the amount of calcium available in your heart cells. With less calcium, the heart doesn't pump as forcefully, which means less blood gets pushed out with each beat. As a result, the amount of blood your heart pumps per minute, known as cardiac output, drops. But that's not the only thing happening. General anesthesia can also cause your blood vessels to relax and widen. This is called vasodilation. It might sound like a good thing, but it can actually lead to a drop in blood pressure. Picture this, imagine the water pipes in your house suddenly getting wider. The water pressure would drop, right? The same thing happens with your blood flow. When your blood vessels widen, the pressure decreases, and blood moves more slowly through your body. This slower blood flow can be a problem because it means less oxygen-rich blood is reaching your organs and tissues. And during surgery, we need to make sure that oxygen is being delivered efficiently throughout your body. General anesthesia-induced decreases in cardiac output and blood pressure directly impair oxygen flux by limiting the volume of oxygenated blood delivered to tissues. Additionally, the pharmacokinetics of anesthetic drugs are influenced by changes in cardiac output. For instance, a significant reduction in CO can delay the clearance of anesthetic agents, leading to potential risks of intraoperative awareness or inconsistent depth of anesthesia. The combination of myocardial depression, vasodilation, and reduced cardiac output can lead to regional hypoperfusion and hypoxia in critical tissues, such as the brain, kidneys, and myocardium. This is especially concerning in patients with coronary artery disease, where decreased oxygen supply may trigger ischemic events. Next we're diving into how we manage the effects of general anesthesia on your heart and blood flow during surgery. But what do we do when those numbers start to dip too low? Here's where things get a little technical, but don't worry, we'll keep it simple. First, we might use fluid management. Think of it like topping off your car's gas tank. We give you fluids to boost the volume of blood circulating through your body, which can help raise your blood pressure. Next, we have medications called vasoactive drugs, like phenylephrine and ephedrine. These drugs help tighten up your blood vessels, raising your blood pressure and improving blood flow. It's like adjusting the pressure in your tires to make your car run more smoothly. Finally, if your heart needs a boost, we use inotropic drugs like dobutamine and milrinone. Think of it like adding a turbocharger to your car's engine, giving it the extra power to keep blood and oxygen moving efficiently so, managing anesthesia is a balancing act between monitoring your heart's performance, maintaining blood pressure, and ensuring oxygen delivery. Our goal is always to keep you safe and your vital organs well supplied with oxygen during surgery. So, what's the takeaway? General anesthesia is much more than just putting you to sleep. It's about carefully managing how your heart pumps blood and delivers oxygen to your body, 
all while keeping you comfortable and safe during surgery. It's a delicate balance of art and science, and it's something that your anesthesiologist is expertly trained to do. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Optimal Anesthesia. We hope this gave you a clearer picture of what happens during surgery and how we work to keep your heart and oxygen delivery in check. If you found this episode helpful, be sure to subscribe, share with your friends, and visit us at OptimalAnesthesia.com for more in-depth insights into the world of anesthesia. Until next time, stay safe, stay informed, and remember, anesthesia is all about balance.